Hi everyone, time for another MAD item review. So here we have a piece of licensing material from 1994. So this was used to advertise to potential licensees of the MAD brand. Uh, and if people wanted to make, for example, MAD memorabilia or collectibles, uh, they could use this as a guide for what they'd be in for if they tried to do a licensing deal with MAD. Uh, so we have some really nice metallic and raised um, type here. Uh, on the inside we have, here's a chance to get your hands on some mad money. Of course in reference to the money that they'd make from selling memorabilia. Uh, we have sell truckloads of moronic stuff to make a ton of cash. Smart retailers go completely mad for mad. Uh, we have a teenager's car as seen by his friends being a taxi and a Dodgem car as an insurance company. Uh, we have what are you looking at, of course, instead of what me worry. Uh, and then you have a little piece of art there, which I've got a bit of a story about. So the basic underlying premise of Mad Magazine, that the shrinking number of Americans who are literate will waste their precious time on material that's not worth reading anyway. So if you have a look at that piece of art there, I'll just stop this item here and I'll actually show you something. After I bought this item, I actually worked out that I owned the piece of original art that it went with. Uh, so here we have a piece by John Caldwell. Uh, this was one of the very first pieces of art that I actually bought. And I bought it because it had a picture of Alfred and the word mad on it. There's actually not that many pieces of original art that are inside the magazine. That actually had mad referenced on it so obviously you could get something by a particular artist but saying the word mad on a piece of art was actually quite rare um, I can't remember what this was in reference to but it was something like um, you know you're an idiot if you read mad or something it was a piece that John Caldwell did that had a lot of different examples in it so as you'll find with a lot of mad use particularly in advertising they'll reuse a piece of art done for one purpose into a completely different purpose so I was really kind of delighted to find that I actually owned the original art that went with it so let's go back to the piece uh, so then we have the mad stages of being lost denial, anger, depression and acceptance uh, it looks like a piece of art by Tulka uh, we have another one I would say by Caldwell but I could be corrected uh, which has the basic underlying premise of gourmet cat food uh, that cats developed in a pre oh sorry about that she might just take this out we'll go through that in a minute the cats have developed an appreciation and craving for fine cuisine through Ian's wolfing down insects birds and rodents. See clever cutout insert for all the exciting details and remember we spend lots of money on printing this brochure so that you can make lots of money selling this genuine high quality stuff and high quality has uh, our boss made us put exciting high quality and valuable parts we wanted to say oh never mind. So think of that before you throw out this valuable advertising material. So we have some other artwork there, the three T's of beach bums, toning, tanning and treatment. Uh, it's got just license mad. A uh, couple of spies there and let's have a look at the other piece that was with it. Uh, so this is free, cheap, free, what me worry, $3 bills. So it's mad money and it's uh, another fold out that goes through the different types of things that you can actually do. Uh, so it's talking about the founding of MAD in 1952 uh, through desperation, obviously, to keep EC publications as popular as they were. I'll let you have a bit of a read of that. We have a Sergio Aragones marginal there. Imagine the bursting feeling of pride you'll feel joining the ranks of MAD licensees. Imagine holding your head high knowing that you're giving back to the country what it gave to you. Imagine gazing clear-eyed into the future with newfound sense of dignity seeing Alfred N. Newman or Spy Vest Spy on your merchandise. But most of all, imagine the superior, gloating, snobbish feeling of you making megatons of cash. Uh, so it has current licensees. 
Uh, so Fossil made some limited edition collector watches. Primetime made adult and child headwear. Ubi made boys and men's knit or woven shirts and boxer shorts. Uh, Watson Brothers had made ties, bolos and hosiery. Hosiery, I've never heard of that collectible. Uh, First Star Software had made the Spy vs Spy video and computer games. Uh, we have some Gibson greeting cards, which of course you've seen before. Uh, OSP Publishing, posters, buttons and keychains. Toys and games, Lime Rock International, trading cards, hologram cards and trading card stickers. Uh, branded foods, Craft Food Ingredients Corp, Berserk Candy Works. Uh, so candy gum and mints. Sorry about the focusing on this. Lightrix Inc. Holographic bookmarks, holographic key rings, holographic stickers, and holographic polymer film. Uh, kitchen sink press. Uh, Who ha the mad and EC collectibles guide. Little Brown and Company. Uh, completely mad coffee table book in hardcover and softcover editions. And practically the whole world is mad. Mad is published in over 10 countries worldwide, including the Bronx. Uh, so that's the back of it there. Mad We Trust, Spy vs Spy, and a replication of the other. Let's fold that back up. That goes back in here. And then on the back. Uh, we have open here, to open head, peel sticker off. Hey, remove the sticker and find out about how to cash in on this once in a lifetime deal. Okay, I'm going to have to move a bit down there. Uh, so there's five different licensing options that you could have got at the time. Uh, so this is 1994, as I said before. Alfred E. Newman's most popular with adults. Alfred has been an American icon for a really, really long time. Uh, his famous What Me Worry line is still echoing cry of men and women with absolutely nothing better to say. What finer face is there to put on merchandise than this? None that our ad copywriter can think of. The point is, Alfred sells. And in America, isn't that really all that matters? Spy vs Spy, about 40 years ago, a highly scientific demographic research project was undertaken to prove that Spy vs Spy is eternally popular with boys 8 to 12. Now it's proven, and if that's not good enough for you, we'll wait another 40 years and let some other guy make the licensing profit. Mad sayings, Eck, where would we be without the usual gang of idiots to put on your merchandise? Don't be a schmuck. License mad sayings. Mad strips, no we're not talking about taking our clothes off, we're licensing mad strips. The world's funniest cartoons. Uh, it had an asterisk there, so I'll cover that in the bottom. Uh, mad strips follow the grand tradition of mad magazine licensing. Kids love them, parents hate them, and licensees get filthy rich on them. Uh, sorry, Mad Magazine. And its affiliates provide no guarantee of laughter and cannot be held responsible for making you laugh. No license at all. So this is the fifth option in licensing. And where's that going to get you? Running around town trying to pawn off blank stuff. And then we have inside Alfred's head being a spy about to let off some dynamite. In two pages there's an awful amount of different things in it. As with most items in my collection, I hadn't seen this before I bought it. Uh, you can probably get a copy of it, but it might take some time. If you're desperately searching for one and you might want to trade something, um, maybe hit me up in the comments and then we can start a conversation. Anyway, that's all for this item. Uh, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do, and we'll catch you next time.